Good day, two-wheeled friends. Zach Gord's here with RevZilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Today's guest is the CF Moto 650 Adventura. So that's a mid-size parallel twin with comfy upright ergonomics and standard luggage. Sound familiar? Yeah. That's what we thought too. Big fans of the Kawasaki Versus 650 here on Daily Rider, as some of you may know. And this Chinese-made CF Moto seemed like it checked a lot of the same boxes for an MSRP of $6,800. Lots of questions to answer then. Is it a good motorcycle? Is it as good as a Versus 650? Those answers and more coming up. <laughs> All right, everybody, here we go with the Adventura. Before we get started, uh, a friendly reminder. This episode of Daily Rider is brought to you by Michelin. Michelin made its first motorcycle tire back in 1897, and the company has been dedicated to innovation and technology in the two-wheeled world ever since. More to the point, Michelin is a fan of Daily Rider. So the next time you need street tires for your street bike, or dirt tires for your dirt bike, or Adventura tires for your Adventura, Click on the link in the description of this video, shop Michelin products, and you too will be supporting Daily Rider. Okie dokie, everybody. Time to talk CF Moto 650 Adventura. Um, we'll start the front. Why not? J. Juan calipers here for the front brake, steel braided lines, which is kind of nice. You got a 649cc parallel twin, 180 crank, uh, same as the Versus 650. The engine mounts are even suspiciously similar. Asymmetrically mounted uh, shock, also very Kawasaki versus and the underslung muffler. Same, same. Styling wise, it's its own beast, I think. Actually, one of the things I like about the the uh, 650 Adventura is um, it's kind of got like a maybe a quasi KTM thing going on, but in general, I think it looks sharp. It looks different. It doesn't look like anything else. It doesn't look like it's trying to knock off anything else in this category, which uh, I appreciate. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Adjustable windscreen, uh, these little knobs here. Oop, that was loose. Um, I don't have to talk to the coworker who left it loose. Come on, guys. So you spin these loose and then this uh, will slide up um, and you uh, spin them to tighten them. This one is reverse thread so that they rotate the same direction to loosen and tighten, which is um, kind of a neat feature. And uh, standard shad luggage with uh, not as sexy a mounting system as the uh, Versus 650 has or as the Triumph Tiger Sport 660 has where it kind of tucks into the uh, actual chassis of the bike. This is, um, you know, like a subframe that sticks out and is mounted on the side. But uh, standard luggage, which is nice and uh, pretty good luggage, actually. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Okie dokie. I think we're ready. Let's uh, turn this sucker on. This uh, nice, pretty big TFT dash here in the cockpit and we'll fire up this beast. And uh, if you know anything about a Versus 650, you'll think, huh, that sounds familiar. Uh, a little bit slightly sharper exhaust note, maybe, but we'll uh, talk more about that as we ride. But uh, yeah, Barshi blows, CF Moto 650 Adventura. And I dare say we're ready to ride to work. All right, everybody, we're rolling along here. We can start talking about specs. Like I said, 649cc engine. CF Moto claims 60 horsepower. Um, and I don't remember the torque number, but it'll be in the description of this video, along with all the other figures I present and metric conversions for all you metric daily rider fans out there. The fuel tank is 4.75 gallons. The seat height is 32.3 inches, and on the Daily Rider scales, with the tank full, the sucker weighed in at 517 pounds. Um, so to break those specs down just a little bit, oh, all right. um, the uh, seat height is an inch lower than a Versus 650. Fuel tank holds three quarters of a gallon less than a Versus 650, and 517 pounds is approximately 15 pounds up on a 2022 versus 650 on our scales. Practically, it feels pretty approachable. I wouldn't have guessed that the seat was 
an inch lower than a Versus. It does maybe feel a little lower. It's a full-size motorcycle, even though it's mid-sized in its category. <laughs> And it's, it's fairly approachable, but like the Versus, it's a not exactly a beginner bike as far as swinging a leg over it and um, taking it off the kickstand, as, as far as I'm concerned. All right, off we go. And actually, on the topic of seat height, the foot pegs, also similar to the Versus 650, feel a little high. Not, they're not high. They're just higher than they need to be, I feel like, for this bike. Um, I'm not sure if you can see the bend in my leg as I ride along here. Not uncomfortable at all um, and not the limiting factor for comfort on this bike as we will discuss but uh, just something I noticed you know. Alright merging on to the chaos of a SoCal freeway which is kind of CF Moto's cup of tea. Not chaos that is <laughs> uh, but uh, freeway travel which the old uh, 650 Adventure is pretty good at. I did notice that the speedometer reads a little fast. Rode this bike back to back with a Kawasaki Versus 650, trying to do my due diligence, you know. Also a Triumph Tiger Sport 660, actually. So we're showing 70, we'll figure 66, 65, maybe. Anyway, the bike's pretty good at this. It trots right along, uh, the engine's fairly smooth, and, you know, riding position wise and wind protection wise, bike could do this just about all day. If you speed up a little bit as this uh, Hyundai in front of us is speeding up a little bit. So now we're going 7580 and um, starts to get a little buzz in the mirrors which are not very good. I'll come back to that. Yeah the, the engine feels a little bit more taxed but in general use all four and three quarter gallons of gas doing this for day after day and the bike is probably not going to complain. Back to the mirrors because I brought it up. Um, I don't like the mirrors. They are uh, fairly smooth sometimes, but other times they're kind of vibey. And this joint here is just kind of like a little bit flimsy and sometimes the mirrors fall out of position that you leave them in. And I don't like the shape. It's just, it's too stylized and I can't level them. They always kind of stick up like this and I don't get, why. Well, I don't know, they just don't feel like they're particularly thought out and they don't feel particularly high quality and they don't do that great a job of showing me what's behind me considering the current state of the art <laughs> in mirror technology. All right we're at least cruising along in single lane traffic here. Um, you should talk about fuel mileage somewhere along this stretch and actually I tried to be kind of diligent about getting many figures for this bike since uh, it's new and everything but they were a little bit all over the map and I think that might be partially on me. <laughs> um, the high number that I got was 63 I think, low 60s, um, which is good but plausible for a bike like this. Um, and the low number I got was in the mid 30s I think, <laughs> which is suspiciously low uh, and I think that I don't, I don't feel great about condemning the bike for getting a 35 mile per gallon figure because I don't have um, I don't have more than one figure to back that up. Um, the trip meter for the past couple hundred miles here I've arranged to show on the dash you can see I don't know if you can see actually the font's a little bit small um, 53.2 mpg is what the bike is saying it's getting and I think that's probably pretty fair. I think seeing gas mileage similar to uh, versus 650 is uh, so 50 to 60. That's what I'd expect and I suppose uh, for you Daily Rider faithful I'll just have to report back um, later at some point when I have when I have data that I feel better about. Alrighty into the neighborhood and stop sign challenge. Interested to see how this goes actually. I've had pretty good luck with low speed maneuverability on the CF Moto but um, uh, but also I've had some some problems. Oh man. Oh Juicy no foot stop there. Very good So the results so far don't lie <laughs> one out of one on the footless stops, but I will say that uh, in general I don't uh, love a lot of the interface of the Adventura 650 Adventura around town um, The the clutch feel is is direct enough the throttle response is good without being great um, 
I haven't stalled it. I feel like that um, that relationship is is pretty is pretty clear. Um, the bike communicates that stuff, but the on-off fueling is just a little bit. It's sometimes hard to to feel like you're get it exactly right. It also has kind of an interesting hiccup down in the low RPM. Let's see if we can get it to do here. We'll try this footless stop. Uh, I fudged it up. It's not uh, not super consistent and not always super confidence inspiring when you're pulling away from a stop sign or a stoplight and you get a little hiccup in the pickup, so to so to speak. Um, so yeah, I think as you can tell, it's, that's two footless stops that I feel pretty good about. Fundamentally, the shape of the bike, nice neutral riding position. I feel in command, I feel in control and the bike does communicate okay, um, but a lot of the sort of finer things are not as fine as um, other bikes in this class, let's say. Man, that's a, that's a juicy foot of a stop though. So I'm feeling it to a certain extent, I don't know. There are ride modes, I should say. I'm in sport, as uh, you Hawkeye viewers might have noticed. Uh, if I tap this button up here, this mode button, uh, you'll see it'll go to eco, and that changes the dash look. Uh, and as far as I can tell, that's all it changes. Um, haven't actually heard or confirmed whether or not um, it changes any of the throttle mapping from CF Moto, but as far as I can tell, it does not. It's just sort of two different looks from the dash that you can have, which isn't the worst thing. We'll talk about the dash more later, but it's a little strange to present it as uh, a different ride mode when practically I can't tell the difference. Okie dokie, Lover's Lane, time to talk about passenger accommodations. I think a passenger will find themselves to be pretty comfortable. In general, I think the passenger will find what the rider will find with the seat, which is that the seat is a nice shape and a decent material at first, but it does kind of wear thin a little bit. I think that's one of the reasons that the seat height is noticeably lower on the spec sheet than a Versus 650, for example, is that the seat is a little bit thinner. And that lower seat height is good for approachability but I found I kind of blew through it after maybe an hour, an hour and a half of sitting in the saddle. My cheeks got pretty tired of it and I didn't spend that amount of time in the passenger seat <laughs> um, and no one that I know has. But uh, I think that the uh, passenger accommodations will be in line with what you'd expect in this category. Um, maybe, maybe a little thin on the seat foam, if anything. I'm right into the twisty road section here. I'm gonna start talking early because I got lots of stuff to say. Diving through a twisty section of pavement uh, on, a, on a sporty ride on the 650 Aventura. That's another place where the back-to-back -back testing with the Versus was so enlightening. The suspension is pretty out of balance. The spring rates are maybe stiffer than a Versus 650, so it sort of feels sportier at first, but the damping is kind of out of whack and Aries said he bottomed the fork in a pretty minor dip in the road, which goes against the spring rate thing I just said. And we were all just like a little bit confused. And it all leads to a perfectly acceptable way to swing through a set of curves. It, it works fine, but it just feels a little bit jittery and kind of a little bit uneasy on the side of the tire. And when you ride uh, a Versus 650 back to back with it, boy, the Versus is squishy and it's kind of under damped and it's a little bit kind of like, well, oh, I don't know, why are we going so fast? But, but it just settles onto the side of the tire so beautifully. And when you're in the middle of a corner, it's just happy and confidence inspiring. And it just makes you want to keep leaning over. Whereas the 650 Adventura here, it just, it feels a little, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's holding, holding the wrong kind of energy. It doesn't, it doesn't feel quite as good. And I don't think it's any, overarching problem with steering geometry or um, or chassis build or anything like that. I think it's just uh, adjustments that aren't in tune with what the bike's supposed to do or just aren't in tune in general. CF Moto has been making motorcycles for, uh, well, decades, but realistically in this kind of cap modern capacity, uh, bikes produced for the Western world, um, you know, 
10 years, five years, 10 years, something like that. And Kawasaki's been making motorcycles for 60 years or whatever. And it shows, basically. <laughs> All right. Peeling out of the Alps and back on to surface streets here. The old Adventura roll on power. Roll on test in three, two, one. Well, <laughs> works fine. Independently, Ari and I rode this bike and thought, yeah, I don't know, it's about as fast as a Versus 650. We did some roll on tests, both bikes in sixth gear, 65 miles an hour on the freeway open the throttle wide open and the Versus 650 just creeps away. It's a little faster. Partially that's probably the 15 pounds less weight, but mostly the engine just is stronger. And again, you're riding back to back, you can sort of feel it. All right, red light, let's talk about brakes. I'm gonna stab these mamma jammas. <laughs> and uh, it picked up the back wheel, which you probably couldn't see in the video, but the ABS is kind of lenient in a way that I like actually. Uh, I didn't do, we didn't do any back-to-back -back, uh, testing to see if it actually stops quicker than uh, other, other bikes in the class, but I kind of appreciate that it lets you carry the back wheel before the ABS kicks in. Of course, then the ABS kicks in and it drops the back wheel back on the road and it's going gonna, it's gonna to cycle and I'm sure uh, any competitor would say, well, that's just a sign of it being unsophisticated and it's sort of wallowing back and forth instead of sensing um, the rear wheel slowing down too much or uh, the, uh, sorry, the front wheel slowing down too much or the back wheel coming off the ground sooner, um, which could be. The hooligan in me likes it. The conservative mom in me wonders if it's really the right thing for the safety of the bike. <laughs> okay, ducky, one more red light. Actually, this is the red light. <laughs> um, where we often talk about the dash of Mahusa, and I think we ought to do that right now. So I gave you one little glance at it. Uh, you can see this sort of uh, quasi or faux analog tack around the outside. Um, if I hit this mode button, it goes to eco, which puts the tack on the side and changes some of the dynamic of the dash. Um, if you hold down on this here, enter button, uh, you will enter a bunch of menus here. Uh, you can go to settings, uh, you can link your phone. Oh, navigation. Shoot, we gotta talk about that at some point, but not right now. I'm, uh, I wanna talk about the dash. Uh, information settings, all the stuff that you'd uh, expect to find in here. Uh, one thing I found that I didn't love was that if you wanna look at trip one, for example, which I often do as I'm calculating fuel mileage, I go into here and I go to miles info, trip one. Okay, got it, 19.6 miles. If I wanna reset it, I gotta go down to settings, uh, trip one reset, are you sure? Uh, no, I'm not sure. I don't want to back up. And I don't like, why, why, why can I just hold down enter when I'm looking at trip one and reset it? I, I don't, yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, does the trip one reset matter to you? Maybe not. And maybe I'm making a mountain out of molehill, but it seems clear to me that the, that the functionality the user experience here isn't quite as refined as it could be. And the last thing I'll say that I don't like is the some of the font on the dash, like the miles per hour has this sort of like stylized font with slashes through it. And uh, I think it uh, betrays the actual um, good things about the dash. Uh, the size of the TFT, for example, and the colors used. Um, I wish that the, the legibility was more of a priority, I guess. All right, come over to this here red light. And uh, I just told you I wanted to talk about navigation, so I'm gonna enter that menu. I'm gonna go down to navigation. I'm going to hit enter. And now we got turn by turn navigation. Go into the office. I did it via the CF Moto app, which is useful in some ways and useless in some ways that motorcycle apps kind of can be. <laughs> um, I will say one neat feature it has, which I have not tested, so I'm only telling you about this in brochure form, is it has the sort of geofence thing that you can set up. So if the bike leaves a certain area, like you know uh, where you live or where you've parked or the general area you're in, uh, you'll get a you'll get an alert and a warning on your phone. Um, which I think is kind of a cool, I don't know, kind of a cool thing to to put for free in your app. You can also check. Um, 
I don't know, fuel level and some other stuff that doesn't seem terribly useful. But there's, there's, I don't know, there's some stuff in there and CF Moto put some effort into the app. I suppose I appreciate that. But those of you who know Daily Rider know that I've yet to meet an app that I thought, oh wow, this is the reason to get this bike, holy smokes. <laughs> in summary, I told you that I would answer the question, is it a good motorcycle and is it better than a Versa 650? It's not better than a Versa 650, in my opinion. No. It is worse and cheaper by a pretty wide margin. By if you count, if you take the Versus LT that comes with the luggage, you're talking three thousand bucks ish, uh, and I've, you know thirty percent. That, and that's not nothing. Um, but I, I stand behind my assessment that it's not as good as a Versus. Um, is it a good motorcycle? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, kind of. Hope that helps. <laughs> On to the dirt road shortcut. And this is actually not far off the brochure material that um, was provided by CF Moto, which shows the Adventura in the dirt. So here we go, down our little dusty trail. <laughs> There's no TC, uh, which is kind of fun. As usual, bikes like this with 17 inch wheels and a nice tall riding position, I feel in command, but I also feel the front wheel moving through gravel and sand in kind of a way that uh, makes it feel a little bit uncomfortable. But if you had to trundle down to a campsite or something, I suppose that would work. Where's that jump at? Here we go. He, he, he. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have bottom of the fork. Uh, basically like Ari promised I would. Fair enough. Now, now to wheelie it. Which I tried in second gear, it didn't really work all that well. First gear, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get something out of first gear though. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah! Woo! Look at it go! <laughs> I did grab second. It didn't, uh, didn't work all that well. That was pretty good wheelie though. Good job, little fella. All right, almost to the office. We are 5,000 inches away. <laughs> uh, and I'm kind of wondering if you can back it in, but I'm headed straight for a Mazda, which just changed its mind about where it's going. Oh, changed mind again where it's going. So we're gonna have to experiment in the parking lot. The, uh, the back end news is not terribly exciting. Uh, very, very comparable to a Versa 650. You can get little, <laughs> little squeaks and squeals out of it but uh but no real no real backing it in all the way what with the abs and everything u-turn challenge is going to be a bit of an extra challenge this time around isn't it we don't have a whole lot of parking spaces here what do we got all right we're gonna have to line up we'll line up behind the um the g stang and along this line here and we will go for full lock left oh. Up, up. Ah, two park a little bit more than two parking spaces. Not bad, I suppose. Uh, in general, the low speed fueling could use some work. It's, it's one of those things, you know, <laughs> it's not downright bad. It just, it, it sometimes makes me feel <laughs> like we're not quite on the same page, whether it's the fueling or the, the, the dash telling me how many inches you are away from something. <laughs> like. Are we speaking the same language? Do we? Uh, I don't know. You know, it's it's uh, sometimes the transmission feels really good to me. It feels like a cheaper KTM gearbox with like nice long throws and positive feedback. And then occasionally I don't find neutral, and I think that's odd. And um, and and the sort of the quirkiness with the ABS a little bit, and the windscreen is adjustable, but I don't really like the way it adjusts, and it's not super satisfying to use. And so it's uh, it's 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 complicated, right? Um, uh, it's my job to break it down for you, and I don't know if I'm doing a great job, but for now, let's listen to this uh, sweet, sweet engine. <laughs> Cooling fans on. Take a break, little fella. You done okay? Cleared that jump? Did a wheelie? Yeah, could, be, uh, could be. Oh, I remember. I was going to talk about luggage. I told you I was going to talk about that. Uh, these are shad cases that come on here. Um, I don't remember the size <laughs> of the shad luggage, but I did um, put in here my showy 
Neotech modular helmet. That's a size medium. Modular helmets are usually kind of big, and it does uh, it does fit right in there. Oop. This ties up occasionally, which is a little bit annoying, but um, yeah, and you can leave them unlocked, uh, which I appreciate. So you can lock it if you want to, or you can just leave it to pop open, pop open. Um, there's my flat kit and tool kit, which I usually bring on Daily Rider. It also has this little shelf on the bottom, which is kind of nice. So instead of when you open the clamshell, your tool kit falling down like this, uh, it stays in the little shelf. I don't know. I, I, I like the luggage. I can't say it's out and out better than, say, uh, you know, other other available luggage in the class, but... But I, I enjoyed it. I especially like the leave it an unlock thing for some reason. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want it to be secure. But uh, but that's me. Okie dokie, everybody. Time for Instagram questions. First up, Corey Baker 5004 Who says, <clears throat> and I quote, 50 years ago, people wouldn't purchase Japanese vehicles as they were considered junk. Today, Japan is the epitome of reliability. Do you think we are seeing history repeat itself with China? People still look down on made in China bikes, but with the success of CSC, Kimco, and Nami CF Moto, is China looking for a spot at the table? So the answer to that last question, of course, is yes, China is looking for a spot at the table. I think the point about Japan is very interesting, uh, and I think it's good to bring that up. I don't know that it's exactly symmetrical, if I'm being honest, because I think uh, culturally and politically, Japan and China are pretty different, not to mention that the world is a pretty different place now. <laughs> uh, but but I do think that that is the goal, right? That's probably what CF Moto and um, CSC and, and uh, companies like that are, are aiming for, right? They're aiming for that sort of why not us? Uh, and we will provide bikes at low cost with good warranties um, and we'll win people over. Um, like Hyundai and Kia have done in the automotive world, like the Japanese Big Four did in motorcycling decades ago. Um, so I don't have an ultimate answer, but I would like everyone to consider that. I think it's a good point, Corey Baker, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Next up, Dean Jones 461. I don't know Dean personally, but something tells me Dean is the kind of person who gets to the point. Dean says, if you had $7,000, would you buy one with your own money or get a used versus or tracer or something? This is a good question. And um, what we came up with, Ari and I rode these bikes around. Uh, we spent a day at the very least um, testing them all back to back. And that was, uh, we asked this question to each other and to ourselves, and the upshot was we would just get a used versus. That's the decision that we would make. I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm not saying uh, that that's the right answer. Um, perhaps you're someone who likes a warranty. You don't trust previous owners. Those are not wrong-headed uh, ways of thinking. But, um, but yeah, that was our take after spending some time. So thanks for the question, Dean Jones. I hope that answers your question. I was as direct as possible. <laughs> Next question is from Edge Back. Uh, who says, what's the dealer network look like, or how do you parts how do you parts and support for these? How do you get parts and support for these? I think was the question. Uh, what we've heard is that uh, getting parts is pretty good. CF Moto has been really trying hard to fill the warehouses and distributors with parts so that if you need something, it doesn't take too long. And as far as the dealer network, I think, uh, if memory serves, it's 550 off-road dealers in the US right now for CF Moto, and 200 of those are selling motorcycles currently. Obviously, there's a plan to expand that. Because CF Moto sells ATVs and uh, side by sides as well, they're starting, they're hitting the ground running to a certain extent with mass distribution of street bikes because they already have dealer networks set up and people in the system. So that'll probably help. As for how exactly it affects you, I can't say exactly. I have to do some of your own research there. Mark Jackson has the next question. And Mark says, are you going to include a quote giggle score? I thought you were going to start including these. God, you know, I appreciate you, Mark, and the Daily Rider audience for keeping me honest. I can't get away with it. I didn't give a giggle score for whatever the last bike I covered was. And it seems that people, Mark among them, may have noticed. So, uh, yeah, giggle score I would like to include. Keep on reminding me, Mark and others. The CF Moto Adventure giggle score is... Uh, I'm going to say five. 5 out of 10. Not a, not a great score. This isn't pass-fail. Keep that in mind. Um, 5 out of 10 is uh, might seem like a low score, but really the CF Moto is not a, it's not a real giggle-heavy bike. Um, it's sort of, it's to the point, you know? And you can have yourself uh, a nice giggly experience on it, but um, as far as the thrill of the ride, uh, it's basically right in the middle of the road, and I don't know that people at uh, CF Moto would necessarily disagree with that. I think that's sort of the point of the bike. 
Next question is from Paul E. NYC. Paul E. NYC? Not sure. Paul E. says, is the suspension travel enough for a BDR? So a BDR, those not familiar, is a backcountry discovery route. That's a sort of adventurous, uh, rocky, rugged terrain. And the answer, Paul, is no. Do not take this bike on a backcountry discovery route. I mean, you can if you want to, uh, but no, don't do that. I mean, the, the oil filter is dangling off the bottom of the engine. The headers are right here. This is plastic. Uh, it's not a backcountry discovery route kind of machine. That's not what they're doing here. There might be photos of it in the dirt on the website, but um, CF Moto, as of right now, this published date is teasing an 800cc adventure bike that seems a little bit more adventurous. This is much more 17 inch wheel sport touring, that kind of thing. Hopefully that helps. Last question is from M.E. Cooper 105, who says if the Versus 650 is a quarter pound cheeseburger, solid, generally enjoyable, fits most scenarios, but won't blow you away, what is the CF Moto 650. Bear with me here, because some people are going to be offended by this. Um, my answer is um, a comparable veggie burger. Um, and I say that as someone who likes veggie burgers. I ordered a veggie burger on the test ride for this bike, not because of that question, uh, but because I like veggie burgers. Um, sometimes that's what I'm in the mood for. Um, but the thing that, uh, and the veggie burger I ordered was quite good, thanks for asking. The thing that veggie burgers struggle with, in my opinion, sometimes is that they're trying to be something else, right? That's the whole point, right? Is that it's sort of like you can have a burger, a cheeseburger experience, but without the meat. And not that the CF Moto 650 Adventura doesn't have any quote unquote meat, uh, because it does. But my biggest problem with the bike is that it doesn't, it's not reaching for anything new. It, it's, it's trying to be something else that's a little bit different. Um, and like I said about the styling, I think it's sharp. I like the styling. It's one of my favorite things about the bike. Um, I just think that it's when you take such obvious aim at a bike that's already so good, you, you perhaps guarantee yourself some market share, but I just struggle to give the effort too much credit because there isn't a whole lot of effort, right? It's, it's the same thing. And, uh, and I think that's the pickle, uh, sandwich puns aside that the CF Moto 650 Adventura is in. Um, so, uh, I hope that that helps answer your, your burger analogy question and I hope it sheds a little bit of light on the CF Moto 650 Adventura as has the rest of this ride. For now, we're going to put the sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard. Stick with me. We will be right back right now. All right, everybody. Here we are inside Revzilla West. These are the two, um, can you see what I'm doing right here? The Kawasaki Versus 650 and Triumph Tiger Sport 660 in question. Uh, that we used for back-to-back -back testing um, and more to the point are in-house because my good friend Ari Henning is writing a three bike comparison article for Common Tread. Keep an eye out for that article going live on the Common Tread blog. It's going to have uh, detailed photos of all the bikes, uh, our impressions, and it'll be a great resource for those of you cross shopping all of those bikes. Uh, we had fun with the test and uh, I dare say Harry Henning's gonna do a good job with the write-up. So, getting right into the CF Moto uh, 650 Adventura on the Daily Rider leaderboard. I don't have a CF Moto logo. I dropped the ball. I'm sorry, Danny. I'm sorry, everyone who counts on me for that kind of thing. But we can start to talk about where the bike will fall on the leaderboard. Here is the Triumph Tiger Sport 660, uh, just at the bottom of the top five for the 2022 Daily Rider leaderboard. The CF Moto 650 Adventura is going to finish below the Triumph Sport uh, Tiger Sport 660. Is it a better daily rider than a BMW S1000RR? From the standpoint of riding to work, <laughs> practically, conceptually, yeah, it's way better as a daily rider, way better. But you know, CF Moto's got a hill to climb when it comes to brand reputation, right? New kid on the block to a certain extent. Um, and BMW uh, is a let's put it mildly and say it's a long-standing company. <laughs> uh, it's been around a while. Um, I think I'm going to give it the nod over an S1000RR. I levied some pretty heavy criticism on the CF Moto 650 Adventura, but there are some things it does well, and a lot of the things it does well, an S1000RR does not do well. Okay, CF Moto or MV Agusta Turismo Veloce. Interesting comparison there. You got a upright, comfy motorcycle that um, has some sort of questionable quirks and 
design features. Um, and you wonder how out of love you will fall uh, over time. And you could sort of say the same thing about the Amigusta. Do people want to buy a five-year-old, 10-year-old, two-year-old MV Agusta sport touring bike? Kind of. Is the CF Moto parts catalog going to be deep? Is the aftermarket going to be rich? Are there going to be lots of available things for a CF Moto 650 Adventura in 15 years? I don't know. I'm going to put it above an S1000RR, below an MV Agusta Turismo Veloce, but it's close. The Honda Rebel 500 is in the middle here and is almost certainly a more kind of middle of the road, sensical uh, purchase to a 650 Aventura. But features wise, comfort wise, capability wise, I'm, I'm gonna kind of look the other way when it comes to brand reputation, just for a second, and say that the, the CF Moto 650 Aventura is, uh, is, is, is holding its head up for now. As for the Mighty Versus 650 here on the, uh, the original archive um, leaderboard in the top three with the likes of an R1250GS and a Ducati Multistrada V4S, the Versus 650 LT would certainly be up in this area on this leaderboard. All right, and, uh, I've made enough excuses and weird qualifications for one video, I think. Thanks for watching. I hope you um, enjoyed this ride along and you had some fun. Hope you learned something and uh, see you next time on Daily Ride, everybody. All right. Oh, it's giving me a, the turn location in inches now. It's at 3,000 inches, 1,500 inches. And we're coming to a stop. How far now? 748, nope. Yeah, 750 inches until I turn left. I think he wants me to turn left here. <laughs> I think that's what that means.